uh, modern masculinity uh, speaks about wealth, self-seeking, mm -hmm. fame, and attractiveness. Yeah. Could you look at the biblical perspective on all these four things? Yeah, so this is what we've been kind of talking about, that dele delineation. So we're looking at drawing a line in the sand and saying, this is what the world says about masculinity, or like, let's say the higher form of masculinity, because what we're seeing today is this tension. We have the high form and then the low form where we're trying to feminize our men. We want the young men to become more feminine, become yeah. more timid. And so a lot of what we see with the high form, where it's the macho -ness, it's a reaction to that. Yeah. So look at how they're trying to feminize the men. And they say, no, we don't want that. So we're fighting against it. We go to the polar opposite. And that's where we're going to land. That's yeah. where we're going to stay. And so the high form of it says wealth is where it kind of begins. As soon as you're wealthy, then you have this power and this control and you'll be able to fulfill these, these other things. In order to be wealthy, you need to seek the best for yourself. Yeah. Then you need that fame because once you have fame, you have a lot more popularity and you have more of a, an inf a sphere of influence. Yeah. You're an important you're a leader, leader, you know? uh, yeah. personality, exactly. I would say. You're, you're a leader in the public sphere. Yeah. Right? And then, obviously, it helps to be attractive and to work True. on that attraction. Like like both of us here. Very attractive, guys. <laughs> um, so, but, like, it's, it's, it's interesting because, like, even if you're not the most attractive person, well, what do you do? You go to the gym, you bulk up, you, you know, trim the, the beard and beard. the hair and yeah. try to make yourself as attractive as possible. If you have a hair, that is. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So then we look at that and we're like, okay, that's not something new, mm. right? We look at it as though it's something new. Like you said, you know, in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. We've seen it biblically, historically, that men and women have both tried to do this, yeah. have both tried to esteem themselves above the things of God and what their role in, in life is. The role of a man is not to become this leader and this famous public um, public model or figure. The biblical role of a man is firstly to provide for the needs of your family. So if you don't have a family, you're working at becoming a provider of needs. So what that means is you have parents well, or you have people in your life, family and friends that you can work on, you know, providing and helping their needs, right? When we look at um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I actually want to go there. So you for, want me to read it for you? Yeah, let's, okay. let's do it. First Timothy 6, verse 6 to 9. It talks about the man in his character being one who doesn't look to the needs of his own, his own needs, but looks to providing for those around him. Yeah. In his family, in his cool. household. I'll read it for you. Now, godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, I think this is where, you know, chasing women mm -hmm. and so on, which drawn men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith. So this is pretty, pretty serious. Mm -hmm. In their greediness and pierce themselves through many sorrows. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we're looking at the ideal of the masculine macho red pill, and we look at wealth as being the driving force of their masculinity. So they use their masculinity to become wealthy so that they can fulfill the lust of their flesh as, as Paul listed it out. And the word of God saying, that's what you shouldn't do. That's the warning is don't do that. Don't pursue that. I mean, if you become wealthy by God's grace, then you use that wealth for the needs of others. I so, mean, it says that in the same chapter, yeah, right? And he commands the, the rich to be rich in mm -hmm, giving. In giving, yeah. right? And when Jesus says it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, he wasn't exaggerating that it's very hard. Because you fall into many snares, you delude yourself into um, feeling a sense of security 
in your assets, in your richness, in your wealth, is instead of depending on like the, the man God. that you know uh, put his bonds down and he That's built right. bigger ones, and God says today, you know, I'm yeah. I'm going to be asking for yeah. your life. I'll read that for you. Yeah. Uh, it says, command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty, mm -hmm. nor to trust in uncertain riches. Yeah. but in the living God. So we're talking, we were just talking about that. Yeah. Who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, mm. storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Exactly. So mm -hmm. Paul is emphasizing on eternal life on being rich in your good work, mm -hmm. uh, good works, and that to God is more valuable than you chasing wealth. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, one of the dangers, and what happened in um, the early church and in a lot of the churches of Paul is they took a lot of what Paul was saying, and they were misconstruing it, and they went to the other end of it where they said, "Oh, we don't need to work at all." Because wealth is dangerous. That's not what Paul was talking about. He wasn't saying money itself is dangerous. It's that desire and that wealth, um, that desire for, to be rich, that is dangerous. The love of money. Not having money is dangerous. So yeah. some of the men and some of the people were saying, well, I'm not going to work. And then what happens? You don't provide for your family. So there has to be this, this discernment. Walk yeah. circumspectly. So we're not pursuing wealth, but we have to provide for Family. So, just which is literally the chapter before, yeah, right? chapter before, First Timothy, First Timothy 5. five, eight, and and Paul is pretty serious about it. He's saying that the person who doesn't provide for their family is worse mm. than a um, non-believer. Yeah. yeah. So we're called to provide for our family. Yeah. But we're not seeking the riches of this world. No. Because as Paul said, you came, you brought nothing into this world, and neither are you going to take anything with you. 